I think that when, after the stones is realized this is September, and they fly directly to LA to do, uh, to record uh, Get Off My Cloud, and then they go right back into touring. So their, sh their, their focus shifted back to recording music, and like other Stones films, like Rock and Roll Circus, got shelved. And you know, Jagger always looks forward, and the Stones always look forward, and once the time passed, the time it passed. And maybe in addition to the restoration work that was done, uh, did, are, are there any actual sort of content changes to the film? Were scenes added, taken out, uh, any uh, different uh, music than was in the original version? Well, yeah. I'd say about 60% of this film is entirely new footage. We didn't even know if it really existed until we started investigating the restoration of the original films. So. Uh, for instance, the scene of the sitting on a fence scene. Sitting on a fence, the kids following them down the road. The oh, press most conference. Of yeah, so <coughs> most of the performance, they were just raw footage. The performances, if I can add on, it um, didn't exist. They were, Mick and our, our editor, Nathan, was out there somewhere, poor Nathan, sat there with silent footage of just like, Knowing, knowing this is shot on, um, God, I forgot the name of the camera. It's an and eclair. Thank you. So it's not, it, they run very short little clips. So this is one camera shoot. And no sound. And no sound. Um, and poor Nathan had to sit there and read lips and try to figure out what song they were singing and then see if he had enough footage to create an entire performance and then see if we had audio that would match that, le from that year, that from that tour, that would match that level of performance. That's great. A lot of this was unmarked and uh, different sort of elements that we were dealing with. Some of it was print, some of it was work print, negative that hadn't ever been processed. That's why when you see it, it you'll see um, quality different trails in it, but it's literally because there is negative. There is print that doesn't have negative. There is screening prints without any negative, with optical sound. So we tried to get the best source for the content that we could find. And uh, can you, I, I wanted to ask a little bit more about the sound because, uh, I mean, we know a lot about how film picture is restored, but the quality of the sound is so wonderful in the film. I mean, it, it really sounds like you're at a, a concert. It's incredibly high fidelity sound, was the sound that you found, even even if you didn't know at first what it went with, was it generally in better condition than the picture, or was there also a process of restoring the, the, the quality of the sound? There was there was some restoration to the sound, but those were recordings, three-track recordings that were made by Glenn Johns, who also appears in the film. He's a very well-known engineer and producer later, after this. and. Uh, they were pristine recordings, and they were unbelievable. So we got a chance to use them for the first time. It's really great. I want to uh, turn it over to you guys. We have uh, some mics floating around, so just wait for it to come to you. We'll start there in the center, sir. Has his hand up. Have, have any of the Stones seen the restoration at all? The Stones have seen the restoration. Well, the what was their reaction? They are on board and very supportive. The, the scene there with the family, is that, uh, what was the occasion of that? Can you tell a little story about that whole scene? Or does anybody know? No, um, Andrew Alden <laughs> knows. Um, I don't know. It's hysterical. Yeah, it's, really <laughs> it's um, It looks like they're having a good time. The um, guy's wearing the jacket, and the, the, the one's wearing the pants, and the, and the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, wait, good you caught that, you're watching. Yeah, throughout the whole, and if you notice, throughout the whole two days, they don't change clothing. They're performing in their street clothes. But they're a working band. That's what's so great about this. You know, they are a work. They are together. They're staying. If you notice in in sitting on a fence, Charlie's sitting there really bored. He's holding his room key. He wants to leave. You know, Keith is drinking water. That's amazing. <laughs> but they are a working band.
And that's just them trying to kill some time, I guess. Or try to make interesting fodder for Peter to shoot, perhaps. The person makes me feel young again to see this, this footage. But the, my question has to do with, the, with Alan, Klein, Abko, and um, Andrew. Uh, these are the, the back room player boys here that have always proven to be quite difficult personalities and very possessive of, of their turf. So how was that negotiated? I couldn't, you were a little muffled. Yeah, what did you say the last part of the question? Uh, I'm asking a question about Alan, Klein, Abko, and um, Andrew Logan, who both were very involved at this, particularly Andrew at this stage, how did you deal with, with, with the Klein estate and with APCO and with Andrew? How much hands-on did Andrew have or fingerprints on this, on this work? Well, Andrew, uh, APCO is the, di the, the distributor of this film and Andrew shares the copyright on it. So there's no problem. We all had agreed that Charlie would be um, a 50th anniversary release, so that was never an issue. It, um, the interesting part came when we discovered all the extra footage and realized that it wasn't going to be the 35 minute version or the 49 minute version, that we had all this this opportunity because of technology and time and heart and the benefit of 50 years to create, a, a, to revisit and re-envision this time. So... And also to preserve uh, Peter Whitehead's and, and Andrew's original version. At the same time, yeah, right. so those still exist. Which were more of a cinema verite approach than what we're doing here, which is... Um, so your question again, I'm sorry, was... Well, I mean, what made... There was no you mention Nick, What made Nick decide that this, was, this one was... Okay. Well, it's the obvious, isn't it? It's their first time. So I don't think he took any convincing. Uh, in, in the back, on the end? <laughs> what was Peter's involvement in all this? Because this was... He shot it. Uh, yeah, and we began the movie, we began talking about this, I saw you see him credit, of course. What was his role in this whole process? Did you, just, I'm just curious. Um, we went to Peter. Peter's not well, physically. Um, he was very aware of what we wanted to do, that we wanted to do this. And unfortunately, he was physically unwell enough to come here to participate in the actual day-to-day -day cutting of it. But we sent him versions and he signed off. So he's, you know, totally behind us and so excited that it's finally getting the exposure that it deserves. The part of set, did you have to dub satisfaction in there? That version or was that, was that the real performance? That's the real performance. These are all live performances, no other the real deal. Wait, wait for the mic, please. Lots of relation, lots of um, references to the Beatles. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the, the band's relationship. The band's relationship between the two? They were friends. They were competitors and friends and you know, the Beatles were the Beatles. As somebody once said, there was the music business and then there were the Beatles. <laughs> right? They actually, Lynn and McCartney wrote the Stones' first single, and it was through Andrew that they got it. So it's a, it's a friendship, a competitive, friendly friendship. Uh, any further questions? 
Maybe just in, in closing, uh, uh, Robin, you can say something about what is the, the destiny of this now uh, post-New York Film Festival? How will it be distributed uh, commercially? Well, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> uh, it, will... Um, it will be in stores. Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to say that? November 6th. November 6th? Okay. I'm allowed to say that. Am I allowed to say anything else? <laughs> theatrical. Oh, wait. It will be theatrical. Um, what else am I allowed to say? Broadcast. Oh, broadcast. Right. I didn't know if that, was, if that was all done. Okay, broadcast, and we'll be on the BBC in London. And uh, that you can't say. That I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> you say yeah, I always know I go too far. Well, let's stop there. And just, uh, thank you, and then thank you very much for for being here this morning. Thank you. Thank you.